So for everyone asking, I'm Fortune EKT. Um, I'm a technical writer, docs engineer. Uh, I also work as Storyblock as a DevRel engineer. Uh, like I said, slide is a bit delayed, so let's just waste time a bit and just relax. By the way, if you're behind, you can just come in front. Uh, I think there's enough space for everyone. Mm. Yeah, uh, so first things first, uh, why we wait for the slide again? So again, I have some grand rules for this talk. Very simple rules, actually. So I have like some grand rules. Uh, so for this talk, there are some grand rules. Very simple, not too much. Number one, always nod. If I say something, just nod the red light. You get. Is that you nod or you smile? That's a simple rule. You get. You nod and you smile. Number two, don't sleep. There's no sleeping in this hall. You want to sleep, you can go out now, but don't sleep. The number three rule is, you can just tweet at me, at dog underscore, and then tell my colleagues that I was here, so they know I'm doing my job. <laughs> yeah. Then, uh, number three, if you see any joke on the slide, just laugh. If you see any joke, you must laugh. There's no, even if it's not funny, just laugh. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on this time around. Yeah. Of course. So, Okay, doesn't matter like get you get the rules now. Number one, nod and smile, right? Yeah. Number two, don't sleep. Then number three, you have to like tweet at me on Twitter at Code Dog, then be like, hi, sorry blog, he's doing his job. Just be kidding, just kidding. But yeah, uh okay. Uh next? No. No, go just go back, please. <laughs> okay, so today, next. So hi everyone. Like I said before, I'm Fortune, I'm a devil engineer story blog. And today I'll be talking on developing static websites with headless CMS and Jamstack. Uh, next slide. Yes, so some grand rules. Always nod and smile. Please don't sleep. I'm, I'm begging you, don't sleep. Then number three, tell my colleagues I was here on Twitter. You can tag me at codedog underscore. Then number four, I think you've done that when we started. Say hello to the next person. Uh, I'm going to be rushing a bit because I have like 20 minutes. Next slide. So number one, what is Jamstack, basically? The topic says developing static sites, right? With Jamstack and headless CMS. So what is Jamstack? Next slide. So Jamstack basically is a web style that allows you to work with JavaScript, APIs, and markup. By the way, who knows what Jamstack is? If you know, just wave your hand. Jamstack. Who has used Next.js here? Next.js. So you can actually kind of know Jamstack. Who has used static site generation on Next.js? OK, nice. That's good. So Jamstack now. Basically allows you to split code. You have to like focus on writing JavaScript. There's one for APIs that connect to the server and the client and all that. Then there's Markov, which is what the client actually see. Then due to the rise of Jamstack, there's been a rise in static site generation, which is basically where it's, as the content is stored, then it's delayed, like displayed to the client. It's that high to store. Do you get? Next slide. Now, example of SSDs are like Next.js, Nox.js, Gatsby, all of them, Google. They're all SSDs. I don't want to go into all that, but you can read up on it. Now, what is headless CMS? I said my topic was developing static websites, right? With headless Jamstack. So what is headless CMS? Next slide. So headless CMS is CMS without head. You must laugh. Come on, guys. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> so, but for you though, next slide. So yeah, so headless CMS basically is a CMS that separates the head, which is the client side, from the server. Now, unlike most monolithic CMS out there, like WordPress, where everything is like on WordPress, right? For headless CMS, you are allowed to use whatever framework you want to use for your client side. You are allowed to work the server side however you see fit. So you get nice. Next slide. So let's go into the topic so far. Um, building the static site with headless CMS. I'm going to be using, sorry guys, story block. I'm kind of like biased. And next JS. Next slide. Next slide. So uh, there are four steps to building the whole thing. And the step one is you can actually close story block space. Now, story block space is where your site is built. So you just you can use your phone and scan and then clone the space, and it's all yours. I'd have to start from the beginning, because that would take a lot more time. Next slide. So number two, you can clone my Next.js application. For this talk, I've already created an application on GitHub. 
that you can just scan the QR code and immediately just clone it on your repo and you can work with it anytime. So we have a Next.js application that we built. We have a story block space I already created. Next slide. Uh, number three is get a story block preview token. Now to work with story block and your Next.js application, you need to have a preview token, which is kind of like an API secret that allows you to connect your application on story block with your Next.js app. So just go to story block, click on settings, click on access tokens, and then get an access token. Now you get this token, store it an EMV file on your Next.js application, and then store it as story block preview token. That way it allows your application to connect with the headless CMS story block. Does that make sense? Yeah. Great. Next slide. Yes. So I show here how to connect to the preview token. Basically, what we're doing here is we're putting Storyblock init and API plugin from Storyblock React. Now, Storyblock React is an SDK by Storyblock team that allows you to connect your Storyblock application with your React or Next.js application. Now, the next thing you do, the Storyblock init basically allows, it tells Storyblock that, okay, I want to connect to this space. Now, the API plugin allows you to define components that you have on Storyblock on your Next.js application. Do we understand? Who has used the headless CMS out here? You've used any headless CMS, content source, sanity? Okay, good. So it's actually similar, something similar to this for all headless CMS. There's a token, you have to connect to the token using SDKs. Now, the next thing we do here, we ask, ask the access token. Basically, we are telling it that the access token for this space is on our EMV file. We know about process or EMV, right? Nice. And then we now say, use what we're using, API plugin, meaning let me use the Storyblock API. Now we now define the components. I'm going to come back to why it's important to define the component I have in your Next.js app and on Storyblock. It's very important to have the two of them on the same places, right? If you have it on Next.js, you might have it on Storyblock. Uh, next slide. Now behind the scene, what is going on here is that you just told Storyblock, I want to connect to your application, right? And I have already provided you an access token. Now Storyblock will now receive the application and then show you what we call a a story block bridge, basically. It's like a JS bridge that allows you to connect with your application on story block. With a JS bridge, you can now see what your application looks like. Instead of, you know WordPress is that you have to click, do a change, and then go to preview, and then see changes on WordPress, right? Yeah. I'm going to show you something cool. So story block doesn't have any of that. You have a preview environment on story block that while you're working, you also get to see your changes in real time. So that is done with the JS bridge, basically, and loaded on iframe. Am I speaking too much text stuff? OK, <laughs> next slide. Nice. So I just said there that the visual editor is basically enabled, meaning the application now is like ready to go, right? If we are with our laptops, this is what application will look like. So now if you look at the image, we see here, uh, should I? Yeah. So basically we see here, this is the application. And then beside here, we see the story block environment, all our fields, components on display. Now if you make any changes on story block, you immediately see it on the left hand side, which is where the visual editor is on story block. So the visual editor is actually like, it's kind of like a Chrome setup on Storyblock that shows you what it looks like. Um, now, on the first image, I'm basically showing you all the components. I don't know why it's a bit blurry, but that all the components there, or blocks, like we call them on Storyblock, are basically the things that we define in our Next.js application in the beginning. If you remember, where I told you I have to define your components on that. Nice, good. Uh, next slide. Nice. So basically, I said here, let's unwrap the Next.js components. Now, if you look at the image on the right, it's basically all of the components that are on our Next.js app. The customers are also there. The features, the intro um, components or block are actually there. So all the components on story block are the same components that are on Next.js, right? So that way you're not doing anything different. Now, Next.js app as a skeleton. Basically, this is what application will look like. Our components must have this field or this page, kind of like building a navigation, right? And then story block tells you, okay, nice. I see what you did there. I'll use it now. Do we understand? If you understand, say hi. OK, uh, next slide. Now, I'm going to do something different. I basically have two images here. On the left-hand side, we have a feature component on our Next.js app, right? And on the right-hand side, we have Storyblock, what that component looks like on Storyblock. Now, if you look at the first part, we basically have a feature component that has an image. It has a H1 tag. It has a description. Now, the image also has, on the components, you also have like a filter, like a nested block that shows, okay, you can select images and more, right? This is what it looks like on Next.js. Now, to build on headless CMS, right, you have to create a skeleton for your component. Do you understand? Actually, when we're doing a static site, since static sites are basically the same thing for the client as they are stored, right? So, what we did there, just created the skeleton for our, our project and then added story blocks to it. 
Now, if you look at the image on the right hand side, you can now see all of those fields that we've created on Next.js on Storyblock, right? You can then deploy your Next.js in a different server or whatever, Nextify, Vexel, and all of that. Why Storyblock gets to use, reuse those components over and over again to deliver your static site to your customers or your users. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. Uh, next slide. Now, I basically, when you're done with all of these steps that I just outlined, we now have what our application looks like in real time. So what we have here is basically a couple of blocks. The customer's block, I don't know if you can see that. Wait, one second. Yeah, I think it's customers. So basically, I, had, I said, hi, Oscar folks. Hi, everyone. This is the demo of Storyblock with Next.js, showing how to work with the headless CMS and Jamstack. So basically, you have like a whole as Jamstack 2 and then Storyblock, which is where you store your information. You can then decide to deploy this application, like I said before, on Vexel and Netlify. And again, your application is like good to go. Do we have any questions or should I keep going? If you're sleeping, say hi. Okay, just kidding. Yeah, uh, next slide. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, that is all about my type. Like again, you can connect with me on Storyblock or say hi to me anytime, talk about headless stuff. But if you want to talk about anything, tag me on Twitter. I'm codedog underscore. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Yeah, sure. Yes, let me come down. Yeah. Like, that's um, the enclosure of the backend, right? So has a backend. Like, the, the backend is like some of the GitHub right? Like, Twitter, right? Okay. So, how does that Okay. so, the question you asked is that, can everyone hear me? Cool, we good, we good. Another question. If somebody asked, just wait a second, yeah, then I got Okay, so, if you ask questions, I can hear you with this. Okay, so basically, when you have a headless CMS, in fact, any headless CMS, let's move story block on the equation for a second. Now, I have a headless CMS. Your application on React, Next, Nox, Gatsby is basically like, kind of like a skeleton. It's not the main content you get. It's just like a skeleton of what, just a skeleton that contains your components, right? You then put those components to your headless CMS. You can then deploy your application. Let me put on GitHub, for example, and leave it there. Then host your headless CMS as a different thing on another server. It could be Netlify, Vexel, or anywhere else. Now, Storyblock, let me now come down Storyblock. Storyblock has a DAM, which is a digital assets manager. You can store assets on Storyblock. You can basically use Storyblock as your main tool. However, to serve your application to a whole lot of people, Storyblock cannot do that. It allows you to use it with other services. Now, the reason is because we don't want to restrict users to use only our services, right? You can actually use these services with other people you get with other integrations that you have, Net Netlify, Vexel, and all of those people. Do we understand? Does that make sense? Any more questions? Do we have any more questions? So you can ask questions ranging from static site, jumpstart, or headless CMS. Any more stuff? Okay, I'm going to take it as a no. Okay, this was nice. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for not sleeping. Thank you very much.